Ladies and gentlemen, what does media, well, what do Democrats and media and Hollywood and corrupt intelligence officials have to do to ensure that Trump's approval rating drops? <laughs> Even, okay, this article, I'll give you the entire headline a little later, but this is, the, this is almost the entire headline. President Trump's job approval rating reaches high mark in NPR PBS Marist poll after recent tweets. Of course, they categorize them as a word that I'm going to talk about a little later. This is after the confrontation with the wonderful and amazing and talented and brilliant and intelligent Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And other squad members, fantastic, brilliant Democratic Party intelligentsia. Just the, just the paragons of virtue and morality. This is after that. He's, his approval went up. <laughs> and he, he said this, he said, he said, no, no. He actually stated, then come back, then come back, and show us how it's done. So what they did from his initial sentiment, which was crude and uncouth and politically motivated, he was saying something that spans beyond skin color or race or ethnic background. With the left, everything is associated with some kind of aspect or part of a person's identity. Everything is associated, except if it's a person of your identity who disagrees with you, who happens to like Trump or be conservative. Then the politics of that, that type of politics doesn't work anymore. But we don't talk about that. They can't stop Trump. They can only hope to contain him. He's like the political Michael Jordan. It's kind of hilarious. I'll just read you this, then I'll get into my spiel. Washington President Trump's job approval rating so far does not appear to have been negatively impacted by the tweets he sent last week telling four Democratic representatives uh, okay, that they should go. He didn't say go back. Well, yeah, he you know, said go back, but he never said send anyone back. And he um, certainly said then come back. So... It's kind of hilarious, like, the actual, the actual tweet itself said, then come back and show us how it's done. Then come back. But see, they never, they never, um, they just never admit that. They never, they never say, oh, well, you know, you actually said come back. So here, let's just go, um... Tweet Trump sent back. They ne see, okay, so here it's... <laughs> he actually said, then come back. Which is hilarious. Okay? But it's not enough. See, what, 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 what media did is this. Media goes and says, aha, you, what you meant, the subtext of what you meant, is that you really meant that they should be sent back. Then a chant erupts, mocking the media, not a true sentiment, because the people at that rally knew no one was going to be sent back anywhere. But the media repackaged his initial tweet, my God almighty, why is it then come home? Okay. So, July 14th. Okay. Then come back and show us how. Here you go. Then come back and show us how. Why don't they go back and help fix the totally broken and crime-infested places from which they came? Which is not an accurate statement, but whatever. They, he's playing and, and, and just manipulating the emotions of people who are so self-righteous. They live every day when they wake up. When the left wakes up and you have washed up, 
actors from the 70s and 80s or early 90s who are great actors actually haven't done anything in a million years and suddenly they're the virtue they're, they're, they're the twitter theocracy telling us how to live and how to think and what's morally justified you can't normalize this here's the news flash bigotry and hatred is far more than a tweet from president trump if your life revolves around trying to defeat uh, bigotry from Trump's tweets, you have major problems. And you've never experienced anything bad in your life. If you look at Trump's tweets and say this is the height of all problems in society. Because guess what? Most Americans don't care and his approval rating is sky high. All time high. But here it says then come back and show us how it's done. These places need your help badly. You can't leave fast enough. <laughs> I'm sure that Nancy Pelosi would be very happy to quickly work out free travel arrangements. Okay, so this is all done in jest. This is all done in jest. This is July 14th, 2019. Instead of looking at this in the manner it should have been looked at, they repackaged, they went ahead and made this a, a cause celeb that made this the biggest issue of the day and it backfired yet again yet again in fact his approval rating among registered voters nationally reached a new high at 44 percent in the npr pbs news hour marist poll but overall okay so so 44 percent at this point, is higher than President Obama was in many polls. I don't know if the NPR poll of, let's, let's try to say, I don't know if the NPR poll of 2012 or 2011, what, what that was with President Obama, but the Gallup poll was below 44%. I do know that at this time. In July of 2011, going into President Obama's third year. Okay, the average American, everyday normal Americans of all different backgrounds, skin colors, races, ethnicities, religions, whether you're black, white, Latino, Jewish, Asian, um, doesn't matter where you're from, okay, who you are, man or woman. The average person in America does not walk around with a chip on their shoulder, is not easily offended, doesn't go and complains, uh, you know, doesn't complain about life, or doesn't um, just lives life and rolls with the punches like we all do in life, whether it's in traffic or whether it's at work. Or whether it, no one, you know, this Twitter world where everything is linked to some kind of big concept, man. Where it's just structural. Uh, where there's this systemic, what was that, Nike is giving me uh, tens of billions of dollars? Okay, that's, yeah, that's great. Let me sign on the dotted line. Or whether it's, you know, oh, uh, who's running? Oh, Clinton. That's right. She's going to run in 2020 and she's going to win. Did I tell you that yet? Clinton's running, but in in on tw in Twitter world, it's you know how dare you? You're not moral. You're immoral. You you said this. You're a Trump supporter. Trump equals supremacy and da, 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 everything. Uh, Thirty one hundred inmates were let out because of the First Step Act. Nobody talks about this. There's, there's economic zones. When people talk about marginally depressed, commu uh, marginalized communities, have you ever, uh, whether it's a YouTube pundit or a journalist, where pick a city where well, Trump is hurting marginalized communities? Pick a city. Who's the mayor? Who's the senator of that marginalized community or governor? Pick a mayor, okay? If it's a marginalized community in California or New York, it's pretty much all Democrat. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, it's like pick a city. But, you know, it's like <sighs> 
It's like they 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 don't get it. They can't stop Trump. They can only hope to contain him. They can't stop. See, okay, in August of 2011, I knew it. 43% of voters. Oh, this isn't. This is Pew. Okay, so uh, well, no, and was it NPR? No, this is a Pew poll. So 43% of voters. Okay, so 2011. So and a whole bunch of these polls, okay, a whole bunch of these polls, President Obama has lower ratings at this point in his presidency with with a media that wasn't as rabid as it is now. President Obama had to deal with the media and he had to deal with certain things that were unfair. I wasn't a fan of when, uh, I just forgot this one, one guy, yelled out, you lie. I didn't like it then and I still don't like it now as somebody who doesn't think President Obama was a very good president. In hindsight, he was not a very good president. Just ask the people of Libya. Or just replay when he drank Flint water. We can go on for talk about a lot. But I didn't like when, I forgot the guy's name, the congressman who's, who yelled, you lie during the State of the Union. That's the type of thing that has been, quote unquote, they use this phrase, normalized by the left. Those kind of stunts are now utilized all the time. Whether it's Kathy Griffin with a headless head, it's like it is this these types of things they've taken to the extreme now because you know it's it's fashionable now to do these things. It's fashionable now not to stand up when when Trump speaks at the State of the Union and you know, um, well I guess they did that with with Obama, but it's fashionable now to just call him not just every day a racist a horrible person, a threat to democracy, a national security risk, a guy who worked with Russia, a special, you know, initiate a special counsel based on evidence obtained and purchased by Clinton, which is a fact. The Steele dossier was purchased by Clinton. We now have an inspector general report. We now have, um, we now have Mueller's testimony coming up and I'll have, um, tomorrow I will have uh, my first live stream in a long time, so look out for that on the channel. But we have ever they're throwing everything, in, including the kitchen sink, at Trump, and he still reaches all time highs in different polls. He reached it was, which poll was it? It was a U. I think it was a USA or an ABC News poll that it reached an all time high, forty four percent, and this is better than Obama's. Uh, President Obama's ra uh, approval rating in 2011 in many polls. So what do they have to do? And they said, oh my God, oh my God, did you see what he said? And the, what, is it, what did he say the other day? They're inexperienced and they lack intelligence. <laughs> and they're racist. He, he's actually turning. And when Trump, look, let me tell you something. The Achilles heel for Democrats will be when Republicans flip the term on Democrats because he has every right to call certain representatives anti-Semitic because they are, like, completely. Not, it goes beyond critique of a country. They're completely anti- If, if you remove the, 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 the word, the country, from their, the tweet of this one representative and actually say, well, this community has hypnotized the world. May God wake up to the, the evils of this community. Oh my God! You would never, end. you would never, the you would never hear the end of it. But it happened to be, you know, people of my ethnic background. So you know what? The heck with it. Who cares? The left doesn't care because they're about righteousness and morality, man. They're about, you know, just being moral, man. And suddenly it doesn't work out because you're going to elect Clinton again. Did I say Clinton's running? Because she is. Okay, she is running again. And that means she's going to win the Democratic Party because the Democratic Party is an extension of Bill and Hillary. It's my extension. I'm not in the mood to do my bill, but... So Trump's previous approval rating in the Maris poll was 43%, a mark he reached in February... His low of 35% came in August of 2017. So this is really interesting. This is really interesting. Even after, even after the tweets, 
even after going like he they can't do he can't do any wrong now the only thing i would advise the president is you know there is in pushing the envelope you don't want to go too far it's democrats and media are like oh what what can, what more could he do it's like he knows what he's doing he knows what he's doing he he's trump is a media brand since the 80s if anyone knows the media it's trump and politics is now almost or i should say the majority of what politics is in the united states of america is media driven so you have a whole bunch of journalists who grew up and like the majority of journalists are in their late 20s early 30s okay they 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 grew up thinking that president obama is like their george washington fdr um abraham lincoln and um jfk all wrapped into one he's just the best president of their lifetime you can never they can't imagine and then you have older journalists on the left who think that bill clinton was the best president of their lifetime so the, the two icons of most journalists are Obama and Clinton. And these are the same people who think that Bush was just, you know, either misunderstood or not that bad. Bush has a, has a favorable, fa- like, I think, I think the majority of Democrats have a favorable view of, of George W. Bush, which is horrendous. It's like, if you, if you think that two failed counterinsurgency conflicts that set the Middle East ablaze... By the way, it tried to utilize a marriage amendment in 2004. There was like the definition of um, bigotry. And then you have um, th- this, the definition of a homophobic political stunt. And then you have a, rece- a recession that almost tanked the global economy. George W. Bush, the worst president of all time. One of, if not the worst president, one of the worst presidents of all time. You can ask the people of the Middle East and just ask people who uh, had their lives upended by the recession. We can go on forever regarding that. And Democrats have a favorable view of him in one poll. And these journalists think that Trump is worse than Bush. And these journalists who write every day about how they can't stand Trump think that Twitter is like the global commons of intellectual thought, where they just like they wake up in the morning and it's an addiction for people to to tweet things and to judge and to condemn and to preach. And Trump's approval is going up. And they, ha- I mean, the smart ones have to be like, well, what's happening? What? Isn't this guy a racist who, who is, who is not only insensitive, but he's a threat to democracy and he worked with Russia? What's happening? Maybe it's all nonsense. Maybe that's not the case. Maybe that's not the case. For every celebrity that says, oh my God, there are... Tens of thousands of Americans of all different backgrounds who were like, yeah, Trump is a good president. I don't like his personality, but he's a good president. I'm voting for him. Independents like Trump, okay? Independents like Trump. Independents don't like the the squad. They don't like the squad. Okay, so Trump approval rating hits record high in new poll. So, 44%, 44%, ladies and gentlemen, so it, it's, it's just, it, it's just, you know, they can't touch him, they can't, they can't touch him, and Trump's approval rating hits record high. I mean, it's like, and and you look at Trump and swing states, Trump approval uh, by state, 
And that's an interesting one. Okay, so July 3rd, the president standing across America. So a lot of this at California, negative 29. Negative 29%. Okay, but Virginia only negative 4. Okay, Florida only negative 3. And that's with, like, you got to take that into account. These are swing states. You got to take that into account. Okay? In Ohio, only negative seven. And this is in June. And his approval rating has gone up. Okay? But if you look, I mean, look at him by state. Yeah, I mean, nationally, fine. But nationally, you have California at negative 29. And you have New York at negative 24. And you have Washington... (laughs) <laughs> which is the bastion, Oregon and Washington, negative 18 and negative 28, okay? But, I mean, you look, you look at throughout the country, he has positive, a positive rating. Texas, he's, he's up four, by four points approval, net approval in Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, he's... It's it's zero neutral net approval rating of zero, but I mean you got a, a North Carolina, South Carolina seven percent approval, net negative three percent approval. So you're gonna have to like Pennsylvania negative nine, but Ohio negative seven, Indiana one percent approval rating. So all he has to do if he's if it's negative three percent approval rating in in Florida, he has to win Florida. And he has to win either Ohio, Florida and Ohio. or uh, He has to win Florida and then one of, st- one of the states in the Rust Belt. And then he's won the presidency because all of the safe, all of the safe um, states for Trump, if you add them all up, you can go to 270 to win. We can do that right now. 270 to win. And he's won the presidency. Okay. You can go to 270 to win. Go to the 2016 actual. He's up 306 to, to, to Clinton, who, by the way, will lose again. Now, give Ohio to Clinton. Give Michigan to Clinton. If you give Ohio and Michigan to Clinton, he still wins because he has Pennsylvania and Florida. Okay, in Virginia, he's actually doing decent. So I don't like, that's according to June. So it's going to be interesting. Um, it'll be interesting. And if he and let's put it this way, if he loses, so if they take Michigan, if they take Ohio, but they don't get Florida, it's 272, 266. All right, so so all he has to do is either win Michigan or Ohio. Or no, uh, uh, Ohio and, and Florida or Pennsylvania and Florida. So, and the only chance they have, the only chance they have is Clinton, actually. So that's literally the only chance they have. But it's interesting. If you go to 270 to win and play with the map, Florida is the key. You, he has to win Florida. Trump has to win Florida. And Democrats have to win Florida. And he's actually doing okay nationally in Florida. And DeSantis and Scott won Florida. So Clinton lost Florida. She'll lose Florida again. And they're gonna go they're gonna roll with Clinton again. She's going to announce either before the third debate or after the third debate in October or November. So give me your thoughts below. It's really interesting. It's really interesting. Um and there's 500,000 manufacturing jobs 
So Trump, let's see. Trump, all he has to win, all he has to do is yeah, all he has to do is either yep, yeah, all he has to do is win Florida and one of the one of the large states in the Midwest in the Rust Belt, and he's won the presidency. Give me your thoughts. And he has a, high, a high, record high approval rating. And they can't touch him. And they can't touch him. And no matter what they do, they have. The thing is also, they don't have any more arrows in their quiver. They don't have. I mean, what can they throw at him? They don't have anything else. They already called him a horrible, you know, Trump racist. They already said that he worked with Russia. They already say he's a threat to democracy. There's record low unemployment. Wages are finally moving up. 500,000 new manufacturing jobs. One million, over 1 million, 200, 300 more jobs than workers to fill them. So what, I mean, what are they going to run on? His tweets? He, he's just hit record highs after the tweets against the squad. So what are they going to run on? They're going to run on, oh, well, you, know, they, you know, they stole it from Clinton. Da, 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 da. Give me your thoughts below. Thank you so very much. If you want to support my voice long term, my Patreon is below. And ladies and gentlemen, Trump has just hit record highs even after his tweet storm. Thank you so much.